Your next comedian is a really good guy, and out of Mississauga, he's bringing his jokes. Please put, a, put your hands together. A nice warm welcome for Michael Morrison. Thank you. Right on. Adam Rankin, ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a warm round of applause. Right on. Now, I know there's some of you kind of shocked you weren't expecting the multicultural moment that uh, has been sponsored by jerseys and big-time comedy tonight. But uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for being here. I, like I've, I think I've doubled the Burlington black population tonight. <laughs> and I'm an import. And I'm an import. <laughs> anyway, um, driving in here today, I have to say that it was such a lovely day, it kind of reminded me of summer. So I, I just, because summer is in our rearview mirror, what I'd like to say is let's give a nice warm round of applause for summer 2011. Did you guys enjoy it? Huh? What? Hang on. What, am I the only one? And I didn't need the tan, eh? <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, man, but honestly, I've never had a summer where the weatherman was wrong and I was okay with it. I mean, if you think back to July, July was like Mother Nature had a hot flash. Or, or Mother Nature was in the menopause, and we all felt the hot flash. And, and speaking of hot flashes, I just have to say, ladies, thank you very, very much on behalf of all the gentlemen for stepping it up in the attire department this summer. Am I right, guys? Do, do I get a round of applause for that? Honestly, thank you, exactly. I, I don't know about you guys, but some of the attire that I saw out there this year, I mean, especially the white Lululemon leisure suit with the hot pink thong combo, really made girls an acronym that stood for G, I really love summer. <laughs> a little bit about myself. I'm, uh, I'm what's called a homemaker. Uh, I, I guess a full-time homemaker, which is kind of a nice way of saying that I'm a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> That's kind of because my wife took my manhood, stuffed it in a jar, and hid it in the cupboard. <laughs> you know, Cinderella and the Ugly Stepsisters got nothing on me, man. I I'm like Cinderfella with three yes dears and a right away sir. And, um, and I come, as you heard, I come from a place called Mississauga. And uh, for some of you that may not be familiar with the place, Mississauga is uh, known, it, it's about 30 minutes east of Jersey's. It's known for a couple of key things. Um, number one, it's evening establishments. Gentlemen, otherwise known as strip joints. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, somebody out there knows that uh, yeah, love is spelt with three letters. <laughs> and, uh, and in my estimation, I, I think having the oldest mayor on the face of the planet running its city, okay? And, and uh, for some of you that aren't familiar with a lady by the name of Hazel McCallion, Right on. Okay, somebody, somebody knows. All right. Well, hang on. For some of you that aren't familiar, let me give you a little verbal visual, okay? Think of Cleopatra's sister. Only she survived to this very day. <laughs> and, and honestly, it's one of the things that I love about uh, Mississauga. Uh, it's, Mississauga's the other Mrs. Um, the one that doesn't end in IPPI, Mississippi. I guess maybe only a man of my pigmentation can truly appreciate this. <laughs> I mean, because if we kick back maybe about, I don't know, 300 years, a guy in my position would have been faced with a choice between a plantation and a parka. And honestly, the only question I'm asking, is the coat filled with goose down, and does it come with a fur-lined hoodie? <laughs> and, it, and really, it, it's kind of what I, I personally think typifies our, our great nation of ours. Because if you think about it, man, historically speaking, Canada was the last stop on the Underground Railroad. And, and think of this. You, you here and, and at home, honestly, all things being equal, I'll take minus 35 over category 5 any day of the week. Exactly, exactly. Hey, if I got to face adversity, eh, I'll face the adversity of a wind chill versus a hurricane or a tornado. You know, honestly, if any, anybody familiar with GTA history, okay, when the army comes to town here in, when the army comes to town in Toronto, okay, you're, they're coming to shovel snow, not debris from the driveway. <laughs> right on, I, right on. Now, um, uh, I guess, I don't know about you guys, but you know, it kind of, for me, typifies what I love about Canada. Because, you know, I just find that we do things a little bit differently than, than our friends south of the border. Do, do you know what I mean? I, I feel that we kind of, we're a bit more refined. Because when it comes to things like um, uh, multiculturalism, for example, I, I find that down there, they kind of treat it like a melting pot. Whereas up here, we cook it, like a, we cook it up like a bouillabaisse. base. You know, and um, it, it's not all biscuits and gravy up here because, you know, I, there are things that 
I like to say are culturally specific. Um, and uh, a good example of this is, I think I can safely say that there's not a brother in the room, me speaking, uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that you'll probably find bungee jumping. Okay, uh, and I, I really, I don't even want to get into the historical hate on that my people have for rope. <laughs> That's right, hey, stop me if I'm lying. And that ancestral aversion that we have to be tied up and drop suddenly. <laughs> Honestly, think about this, really. Because what white people call extreme sports, black people call a brush with death. Okay, bungee jumping might as well be a lynching malfunction as far as we are concerned. <laughs> now, now you can probably tell I'm not your typical black guy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm what I like to call a, a first generation Canadian. Um, what I like to say is I'm 100% Canadian, Jamaican vintage. Unlike, and ladies and gentlemen, you got to hear this, okay? For you here and at home, okay? It's not like Adam and, the, and, the, and how cruel comics can be. These guys call me the Brokeback Mountain love child of Carlton and Urkel from Family Matters. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. What the hell? You know, and, but, but personally, I like the handle that my, that my wife gives me, which is, okay, here it is. It's the Oreo from Ontario. Now, hang on, hang on, there's more. Uh, that's because she says, I've got those good, wholesome, Canadian characteristics on the inside. Wrapped up with the right Caribbean compliments on the outside. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if there's anybody out there like me, anybody that had kind of those, um, I guess, best was, what can be described as those beat first, ask questions later type of parents. You know, yeah, the type of parents I never saw my Canadian friends have. Like my Canadian friends used to have those, like, reason with the option to beat type parents. Uh, I, honestly, hang on. I'll give you a true story. G let me give you an example. True story, okay? Me and a buddy of mine, Scott Cooper, we were going home one time with what could best be described as subpar report cards. You know, and I'm talking that, you know, go out to the woodshed, have a conversation with dad kind of subpar report card. And you see, the irony of this was that Scott and I were scared. But for different reasons. Because you see, Scott was scared because he was going to be in the corner for the entire evening on a timeout. <laughs> Whereas my fear, my fear was that I was going to be trapped in the corner trying to explain my marks as I was fading to black from the knockout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See? Oh, there, there's a brother in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. Someone that knows my pain. I'm serious. I don't know about you guys, man, but when I was growing up, discipline was like a contact sport. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is my time until our next conversation. Thank you very much. I'm going to bring back Adam Rankin. Thanks, man.